Welcome to St Barnabas. My name's Henry, I'm the vicar. And good morning from me. I'm Jane, I'm the members pastor here, and I'm married to Henry. And it's less than two weeks to Christmas. So, Jane, uh, are you ready? Um, am I ready? No, no. <laughs> are you ready, Henry? Well, I've been ordering all sorts of things online to um, get ready, but... Yep, I've been noticing a few deliveries. I'm just wondering if any of them might be for me. Oh, you'll have to wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's just quieten our hearts as we come to worship. Uh, and I'll lead us in a prayer now. Father Almighty, as we come before you, 
we want to confess to you that often we've run in the wrong direction. And we ask now that you would come and cleanse us and heal us and forgive us and restore us. And this morning that we might uh, be able to reach out and know your presence just as you reach out to us. So we commit this time to you. May we encounter you, our living God. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to hand over to Lydia, who's going to be leading us in some creative worship, and that will be followed by Andy and the band for our song worship. It's time to slow down. Get comfy where you're sitting. Forget whatever happened this morning or this week. It's time to focus on God and his presence. So let's start with a question. How big, and how mind-boggling is our creator God? In Psalms, David writes this beautifully. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you've set in place, and I think the trees, moss, branches he weaves together, the rivers he's sprinkled on the earth, the mountains he's drawn up from the depths and powdered with forests and snow. And then David continues, but what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. Just like David, sometimes our God seems so big that it makes us wonder why God would even care about us. One tiny person sitting on a sofa in London in the year 2020, or perhaps joining us from elsewhere, sitting on a sofa in your living room, in your kitchen, joining with us today. The incredible news is that he does. <laughs> the majestic, powerful creator God made you and me a little lower than the angels. You crown them with glory and honor and put everything under their feet. So how shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? It was for people like us that he had sent Jesus to enter into every detail of human life and live among us. The same God that created earth wants to be close to you, living through every high and low in life with you, celebrating your successes and sharing in your joy, wiping away your tears and empowering you when you're weak or tempted. So Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. How incredible is it that you are mindful of us. Now, let's stand and worship God. Breath. 
to come down to earth to make it possible for all of us to be restored to our Father in heaven. And Lord, we thank and praise you for that. And Lord, this is going to be a different Christmas for many of us. But we pray that without the razzmatazz, that maybe people will glimpse behind the tinsel and get to see your face.
Father God, we want to thank you for your many blessings this year. Thank you for caring for us and remembering each one of us by our names. Thank you for being our rock and redeemer, the one who knows the future and our past pains. Thank you for how you work through your son Jesus to give us a bright future and hope for the future and for your spirit who has made a home amongst us now, today and every day. I ask that you bless St. Beast leaders and everyone who will be attending our Christmas activities. Use the season to rebuild our neighborhoods as we share your gospel. Lord, in a season when every heart should be happy and light, we know that many people in our church are struggling with the heaviness of life. You are our peace. We know that peace on earth can only come when hearts, of, hearts find peace with you. You are our joy. You promise rest for the weary, victory for the battle scarred, and peace for the anxious, and acceptance for the brokenhearted. During this season, Father God, we need your comfort, joy, and your peace for our families, our church, our communities, our nation, and our world. You are Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and we thank you that you are always with us, now and forever. Shall we say the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you to Lydia and to Andy and to the Corbo family for leading our worship and our prayers. And if you're new to St Barnabas, we'd love to keep in touch with you. Um, do fill out our Connect form. You'll find that in the top right-hand corner of the online platform or on our website, www.stbarnabas.co.uk forward slash connect. And if you fill out your details there, that will enable us to keep in touch, let you know what's going on. Now this Sunday is the last normal Sunday of 2020 for us because next Sunday is going to be our main uh, Christmas services. Uh, we're really looking forward to that. And then Sunday the 27th is just a purely online service. Uh, so we won't be in the building. But from the new year, uh, we'll be back in the building and in fact we're going to be live streaming our services. So the, the services will be live in the building going out in the moment. Uh, so we're really looking forward to that at the beginning of the new year. And we have a lot going on in the next couple of weeks in the run-up to Christmas. This afternoon at five o'clock, we have an Advent worship night. Now this will be screened online, but it, it, it is also live. If you do want to come in person, um, do you book, make sure you book in um, because space will be limited. But that will be a great way to introduce us to the next week, couple of weeks of preparing for Christmas. And looking ahead to next weekend, there's lots more going on too. Particularly, I want to mention our event on Saturday afternoon for families. Again, live and online. Do go to our website for details. Now, this is the moment when we uh, uh, focus on our, our giving. And of course, uh, giving is part of our worship. We love to give our money. Uh, to God and to the church and uh, of course that's the only means by which the church is funded. Uh, so um, if you want to give in this way you can do so by, by direct transfer or by standing order. Just go to the giving button at the top right hand corner of the online platform or to the website www.sambarnabas.co.uk forward slash giving and all the details of how to do that are there. Let me just pray for our money. 
Father, we thank you for all the money that you give us. And we're aware that as we give to you, we're giving what you have already given us. And so we ask that you would consecrate this money, that it be used to glorify Jesus and for the extension of your kingdom. Amen. And now we're going to go over to Luke. Uh, Luke is in, going to be interviewing Peter. Great. So, hello, Simbees. I'm here with Peter, who is one of my friends. He's got the best smile at St. Barnabas Church. Um, for Peter, for those people who don't know you, um, tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah, so um, I'm Peter. Um, I've probably been coming to St. Bees for about a year. Um, I did the Alpha course um, and um, I've got to say it completely sort of changed <laughs> my life in a lot of ways. And um, yeah, so so now sort of I, you know, I come to the 5 p.m. service and um, I volunteer at the community lunch on a Sunday. So we want to ask you about that, about the community lunch. Um, so firstly, like, what, what do you love about it? What's it been like being part of the team? I think the community lunch is, um, it's a great initiative in terms of bringing different people together. But I think one of the, I'm, I'm quite a people's person. So what I've loved most about uh, the community lunch is, is just being able to just meet a diverse range of different people. Um, and they've all got different and fascinating stories and they, they kind of share that with you. But I just, I think, especially during, I know it sounds a bit selfish, but during lockdown, I kind of used, used the community lunches in order to connect to people. And they've, they've been a real sort of like resource for myself, particularly with certain things that were going on in my life at the time. So, yeah, so good. And have there been any stories um, from the last kind of few months of doing it that have stuck out to you? One of the stories um, was about meeting someone and, and never sort of judging. A, it taught me about never judging a book by its cover. So um, I met someone who who taught, who taught me a lot about sort of British history and Edwardian houses. Um, but um, she also, I think, sort of almost provided some mentorship towards to, to me. So I was made part time in my in my job role. And she really helped give me a completely different perspective about sort of my life and about having faith in God. It comes to show that people that come to the community lunches are quite empowering and it can be extremely um, supportive. And I guess uh, the second story, and this is quite sad actually, that um, I met somebody who I think applying for um, Job Seekers Allowance. And as I was filling in this form, uh, she asked me about whether I could be her next of kin. And um, it comes to just show, um, and it, I guess it highlights just some of the challenges that people uh, that come to this community lunch um, experience. Um, it was just quite really, it was really sad that, you know, she didn't have anybody, especially during lockdowns. Wow, yeah, that's powerful. Um, so how can we as a church be praying for the community lunch? How can we get involved if we want to help out? I guess one of the things um, that I'd ask um, for you to pray for is firstly for sort of the lovely sort of personalities that come to the community lunch that you're able to keep them safe during this uh, during this time during lockdown and sort of the foreseeable future as well that um, you can pray that some of these people who come to the community lunches um, are able to find connection, uh, able to find some kind of almost some, some peace. But also, I think, to pray for our team as well. We've got a great team um, that support us on a Sunday um, with a, a whole host of different volunteers. And so if you can just pray for them, that God keeps them safe uh, and keeps them strong. Because, I mean, they've been working extremely hard during a lockdown as well um, and giving up all of their time. So just praying that God continues to just bless them. Um, I think those are sort of the, the two things I, I'd ask everyone to pray for and I guess like in terms of like the uh the community lunches themselves like we can't we need as many people as possible um uh, in terms of just being able to support the team and there's some there's some great food <laughs> if there's any left um so um yeah I mean it's, it's a great initiative so I, I definitely will recommend that everybody uh join yeah 
so good i i can vouch i've been there a few times and it is always a great event and peter is the best volunteer no offense to the volunteers but he's <laughs> no, all not. the guests best friends of all the guests biggest smile welcoming <laughs> people in um so you can have the opportunity to serve alongside this guy so definitely worth dropping viv an email and you can kind of come along and have a look but should we just close by praying for the community lunch guys God, we thank you for your provision for the community lunch. Thank you for Viv and all of the members of that team who give so selflessly week in, week out. And God, we just pray for the guests. Pray that you would keep them safe, that you would give them peace. Uh, and God, we just thank you for your provision. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks so much, Peter. Uh, I'll catch up with you soon. And thanks for sharing with us today. Me too. Thank you. Thanks so much, Luke. Cheers, ma'am. See you later. Thank you, Luke and Peter. It's great to hear from you. I've got a little announcement for us this morning, and that is that we have appointed a new youth pastor. Uh, his name is uh, Elliot Taylor, uh, and he's not going to be joining us immediately because he's not going to start until the beginning of March. But we're very much looking forward to Elliot and his wife and small baby coming to join us at St. B's and I know the youth will be looking forward to that as well. Now over the past few weeks we've had a, a slot called How Do You Connect With God At Home where we've heard from a number of St. B's members how they do just that and this week I'm delighted to say we've got Rosalind doing this for us so over to you Rosalind. I always start my time connecting with God by making myself a cup of tea and then I sit down and get the daily prayer app up which I like to use so it takes me through some prayers and then prompts me to have a time of silence so for that I like to get a candle out and I like to um, sit for about five minutes um, in silence and just um, quiet myself and reflect on God and sit with God for that time And I find that really helpful. And then it takes me to the Bible readings. So it prompts me to read some bit of the Old Testament and a bit of the New Testament. I've actually been using the Bible in a Year um, readings for that. Um, not that I'm up to date, I'm only in June, but that's fine. Um, and I would like to highlight the passages um, that really stick out to me in the verses which jump out to me in that. And then it um, prompts me to have intercessions and I actually find it really hard to to pray just sitting in an armchair. So I really like to pray while walking. So I like to go out for a walk and that's um, a really good time for me to pray for people. But if it's raining outside, then um, another good thing to do is to kneel down. I find that really helpful, changing my posture and it helps me to engage with God better and uh, um, really press in and pray for people. And then um, there's a few closing prayers and um, the collect for the day, very Anglican, and it ends with a blessing. And that's how I connect with God at home. I hope you find that helpful. Hi, so I'm here with John Peachy, who's one of our mission partners, and we have the privilege of him speaking with us today. Um, but first, we just want to get to know him a little bit. So, John, would you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, I'm John Peachy, uh, married to Susie. And uh, Susie and I have been part of uh, St. B's, sent out from St. B's for many, many years. I think Susie was one of the first missionaries. So we have a family, four kids, and we've been working in Harpland in England with Youth with a Mission. Cool. And can you tell us a little bit about Youth with a Mission? Yeah, so uh, YWAM, as it's usually known, is uh, started, it's actually celebrating its 60th uh, anniversary this year, which is amazing, because oh, nice. we always thought we were quite a young organization. But uh, uh, the real uh, motto of YWAM is to know God and to make God known. And that happens in so many different ways. We're now, you know, more than two thirds non-Western, and I think in 160 nations where we're working. So one of the bigger but maybe not so well-known uh, mission organizations doing a lot of things with uh, 
Bible poverty, addressing that people would have access to the Word of God, um, evangelism, training, and I work a lot in, in training. And uh, yeah, I've been working with a master's in Christian formation and also a leadership training school for YWAM Europe. So um, we also do a lot of mercy ministries. And long ago, I worked in the refugee camps in, in Thailand. So just about anything that's in the kingdom of God, Youth with a Mission is like, go for it. Let's uh, get out there and from every nation to every nation, really let the gospel be known and, and serve people. That's really cool. Thank you for sharing. And I know that um, re recently you got yourself a doctorate. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that uh, took quite a few years. I think seven years part time. I'm so grateful to St. B's for supporting uh, me all through that time. Mm -hmm. And I completed it through the Oxford Center for Mission Studies and Middlesex University. And my PhD is looking at how character is formed, really um, the need to understand from um, a young person's point of view how time in a Christian community and doing discipleship is shaping and affecting who they're becoming, uh, where they're headed in their life. And uh, yeah, I mean, one simple phrase that I'd say is who we're becoming depends on the company we keep. And that would include keeping company with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as well as others, and what we do and say together. And it's as simple as that, but a lot more complicated in a PhD. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. That's really cool. Good job. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. I think uh, now the Corbo family are going to pray for you and the family and for you as you speak. Um, and we look forward to hearing you speak. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our mission partners, the Peaches and the work they have done with youth with a mission over the past years in Harpenden. We thank you for your protection and the opportunity the family had to spend more time together during this pandemic. We are grateful to you as we celebrate the successful completion of John's PhD, Joel and Naomi's graduation from university and Lily's safe move to Norway. We pray that you bless John and Susie with wisdom and discernment as they prepare and lead their online courses, find ways to work creatively while adhering to COVID restrictions, and as elders consulting and praying with YM. Father, thank you for the word you have prepared for us this morning through John. God bless him as he speaks to us. Holy Spirit, prepare our hearts as we receive from you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm reading from the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, and we're going to be looking here just at the chapter together and then considering Jesus as being fully human, Jesus, one of us. So let's read from Hebrews 2. We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. For since the message spoken through angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. It is not to angels that he subjected the world to come, about which we are speaking. But there is a place where someone has testified, What is mankind that you are mindful of them, a son of man that you care for him? You made them a little lower than the angels. You crowned them with glory and honor and put everything under their feet. In putting everything under them, God left nothing that is not subject to them. Yet at present we do not see everything subject to them. But we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honor, because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. 
Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters. In the assembly, I will sing your praises. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, he says, here am I and the children God has given me. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Yeah, in this season, we celebrate more than 2,000 years since the coming of Jesus Christ, God's Son, our Savior. And Advent is a season of waiting. Who likes waiting? But when we're waiting in Advent, we're not waiting for nothing or waiting without hope. We look forward to the return of Christ the King, the King of glory, the judge of all the earth, the Messiah. It's to him that belongs all the honor and glory and power. All the kings and the kingdoms of this world will bow before him. And the obedience of the nations shall be his. He is the anointed one, the Son of God. And when he returns, all that is wrong shall be put right. Yet now we live in the in-between phase. Maybe we could call it the shadowlands between the ages. We see glimpses of God's goodness, but perhaps many of us are also aware more than ever of the pain, the loss, the grief, the fear of the future, the fear of losing jobs, the suffering, the isolation, the consequences of sin. One of my good friends, who was a leader in a church network, is needing to visit his wife, who is in a care home and has severe dementia. And it's so frustrating for him. At first, he was only allowed to try to connect through a pane of glass. And 20 minutes alone, there was no connection that was being made. Finally. The staff took pity on him and allowed him 20 minutes a week to visit his wife. But he's still very frustrated that his wife is isolated when he wants to visit her. We're separated. We're often feeling isolated, not able to be with the friends and family that we would like to be during the season. Truly, all creation seems to be groaning. Maybe you've experienced some of the depressing feelings that seem to be all around us. Where is God and what is he doing? How can we see him or can we really trust that he is working when we don't see him working? One morning in church, my four-year-old son turned to me and asked, Daddy, is Jesus here? And I said, yes, I believe he is, by his Holy Spirit. He replied, Daddy, I can't see Jesus. And I agreed, no, we can't see him right now. And then confidently he said, Daddy, we can't see Jesus with brown eyes. <laughs> and I thought, no, we can't see Jesus with brown eyes, or blue eyes, or green eyes, or even gray eyes. And yet, the writer of the Hebrews in our reading declares that we do see Jesus. 
who was made lower than the angels for a little while. How do we see Jesus? The Word of God became flesh. That's the message of the Incarnation, the message that we celebrate. And the Word of God becoming flesh transforms everything for us. It causes our whole material world, not just our human bodies, to be made significant because the second person of the Trinity came to this earth and inhabited a human body. He forever is 100% human, and yet forever 100% God, divine. We can't get our brains around this. We can't really fully understand this, and yet that is who he is. And when he did that, he made all of the material world, the world that he created, to become alive and to be made new again. And that possibility has begun that we too might be resurrected just as Jesus Christ was resurrected. But in the incarnation, love became incarnated, the living word, God with skin on, um, skin and bones, Hungry, tired, needing friendship at times, sometimes very dependent on others. Have you ever imagined Jesus looking for work? Uh, as a carpenter, I'm sure there weren't enough jobs around in Nazareth. It was a very small place. Perhaps he had to walk a distance, I don't know, five miles or so, to Sepphoris, a nearby Roman city that was being built. Perhaps he was a builder of houses. Can you imagine Jesus sweaty, needing a wash? Jesus wishing that his brothers and sisters would stop their squabbling and fighting? Jesus angry at the unjust treatment of a poor woman? Jesus happy, running and playing with little children, smiling, laughing, playing games? Jesus tearing into a loaf of bread because he's hungry and a bowl of stew. Jesus is fully human. The writer of the Hebrews reminds us that he is, as a human, like we were for a little while. And yet, we're also reminded that in his resurrected body, he continues to be the pioneer of our faith, the pioneer of our salvation, and to continue, although he is with God, seated at the right hand of the Father, to bear the scars that he bore in his body here on this earth. And Jesus has been tempted in every way as we are, and yet without sin. I believe at times he felt discouraged. He certainly felt grief over Jerusalem, weeping, over friends. Um, he shares these emotions that we share. And in the Apostle Paul's letter to the Colossians, we're reminded that he is the image of the invisible God. Therefore, when we see Jesus, as the writer of the Hebrews tells us, we see what the Father is like. Jesus is the image, the icon of the invisible God. And he reveals who he is and how we can know him. Jesus, however, rarely identified himself as the Son of God. Uh, he much more preferred to refer to himself with the title of the Son of Man. And once again, he's reminding us that he's one of us, a human being. He calls us brothers and sisters in this passage, and he's not ashamed of us. Even in our struggles, our fears that we face, he might tell us, why are you afraid? Don't be afraid. Be bold, be courageous. And yet he identifies with us in our humanness. The Hebrew writer tells us that we are God's children because of what Jesus has done for us. But what about us? How do we see one another? Do we see one another as brothers and sisters? Are, are we ashamed? Do we see one another as fellow children? Do we see one another as being created in the image of God and in his likeness to having infinite dignity and worth? 
Maybe you could say this phrase with me. You are created in the image of God. You are created with infinite dignity and worth. Say it again. You are created in the image of God. You are created with infinite dignity and worth. That's us in our human bodies as we are. And perhaps we need to look at one another. Look at those that are around you, perhaps in your home or where you're watching this, if there is someone with you. And to look at one another through the eyes of Jesus, through the heart of God. Perhaps you want to make a little, little heart sign there. And uh, just look through it and say, you are created in the image of God. You are created with infinite dignity and worth. We need to remind ourselves and to remind one another to see one another through Jesus' eyes. Jesus' death and resurrection has broken the power of him who holds the power of death and the fear of death. I think at this time we're facing many different kinds of anxieties, the weight of heaviness, discouragement, and at times we're not able to be together because we're isolated from one another. We're physically distanced. And yet God has brought us together and connected us by his spirit. And I want to remind us again that the writer of the Hebrews urges us not to forsake gathering together. Right now we're able to gather together um, through the realm of virtual connection. So don't be alone. Don't be isolated. And the day is coming when we will see not only Jesus as our resurrected Lord and King, but see all things put under his feet. But as the people of God, we don't just wait without hope or wait passively. We're waiting with expectation to see that heaven is coming to earth, to see that in this day we began, begin to taste that foretaste of heaven on earth, of the coming kingdom, of the world to come. And so perhaps you could just uh, stand with me and declare Jesus Christ is king and put these things, perhaps it's a fear, a discouragement, a sense of heaviness, a depression, a loss or a grief of a loved one, and to begin to bring these to Jesus' feet and put them under his feet. Because Jesus has authority over all fear, over all death, over all kinds of anxiety and depression. Take a moment and remember the names of Jesus. Perhaps something comes to mind of who Jesus is. And just declare it if you're able to where you are. Speak it out loud. I'm going to pray these out together and agree with me as we put all things under the feet of Jesus, who is one of us. He is like us as a human. So let's declare them now. Son of man. Friend of sinners, brother, bridegroom, pioneer of our salvation, pioneer of our faith, teacher, the way, the truth, the life, deliverer, healer, savior, redeemer, word of God, bread of life, prince of peace. Lamb of God, the Holy One. Wonderful Counselor, bright morning star, Lion of Judah, mighty warrior, firstborn over all creation, firstborn from among the dead. Messiah, Christ, anointed one. King of kings and Lord of lords. Pray with me now. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are one of us and have become human just like us. And by your power, we are raised to life by the resurrection power of God. We welcome your Holy Spirit to bring us to life and to give us the power to overcome those things which we face today. We ask for your blessing, for your covering, for your comfort, and for your healing for each of us. 
We ask that in the mighty name of Jesus to bring glory to the Father. Amen. Thank you to John Peachy for bringing the words to us. If you were touched by something that John said, I do hope you engaged in that speaking out the names uh, of Jesus, Son of God, Emmanuel, uh, Lion of Judah, all those names, powerful, speaking those out over our lives. And maybe that has stirred something in you, in which case do 
uh, ask for prayer. Just uh, click on the prayer now button on the online platform uh, or um, if you're in the building go and get yourself prayer from the prayer ministry team. And now let's say the grace together. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to St Barnabas Church today. It's so great to have you with us. Now, if you would like any more information about how to get involved in St Barnabas Church, how to join a life group, how to see what's going on, how to give or get connected, then please head to www.stbarnabas.co.uk or you can just type St Barnabas North London into your search engine. We hope to see you again soon. Please know that we're praying for you, we're cheering you on and we'd love to support you in any way that we can. But for now, have a great week.